Now last year you rotated through four goalies and you've got the three other guys from last year. Is it going to be the same sort of thing or do you have someone in mind to take over right away? Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, it's an open audition in that. I mean, uh, I think as a staff and as a team we're very confident in all three goalies. We have two juniors in Carson Chuback and Cody Campbell and a sophomore in Colby Drost who have all been first stars of, of different games throughout their careers. So they're all capable. Um, you know, we don't play a lot of games in college hockey, so I guess ideally come second semester we would like to have someone who's emerged as the number one. But all three guys will get an opportunity to play, and I'm confident in whichever one gets the call on any given night to be really good for us in that. I think, that's, I think we're really deep in that, and I think that's one of our strengths. Okay, uh, now on the offensive side of things, the team returns 11 of the top 12 scores from last year. Uh, what kind of output do you expect from those guys you know, right away in the early going? Well, you, you need your older guys, your upperclassmen, to carry you through the first few games of the season till the young guys get acclimated to college hockey, some of the freshmen and some of our sophomores. But, um, you know, so you're going to look, look for your old guys to get us going. And, and uh, you know, I think in college hockey you go as far as your, your, your upperclassmen will take you. So when I think of us offensively, offensively I think we're really deep. Uh, and I look to, you know, I look for Giancarlo Iorio, who's a senior and a captain. Um, he's on the verge. If he has a really good season, he could become part of our 100-point club, which is a, which is a, you know, that's a, that's a real good uh, feather in his cap. Some of our best players will have 100 points in their careers. It doesn't happen a lot in college hockey. Uh, Mark Sinet is, is uh, a leader by example, a passionate, hard-working guy that can put points on the board. So I think those two guys as seniors have to come in and lead us. Okay, and before we go into this year's recruits in detail, uh, I have a quick question about recruiting. At the end of last season, you had a couple guys sign pro contracts, including Scott Arnold, who signed with the Phoenix Coyotes. Uh, what did those signings uh, do to the program's profile, and did it have any effect on recruiting? Yeah, I think when you have, you know, Scott Arnold was only a sophomore. He just finished his sophomore season here at Niagara and got the NHL salary cap with the Phoenix Coyotes, and that's national news, you know, obviously uh, both sides of the border. And, you know, he was from Montreal, and we certainly do a lot of our recruiting north of the border, so I think that was a big feather. That, that was a big help for us. And, you know, Chris Noonan having the season that he did last year, leading the nation in a couple of goalie categories, and then going with, you know, signing with the Leafs and, and being assigned to their farm team, and they went on a Calder Cup run, a playoff run, so that was a great experience. So that's just some notoriety for our guys, which gets our name out there across uh, both countries for recruiting. And, and uh, you know those those guys that you know we had 22 former players playing pro hockey last year around the world, and I think that helps us you know recruit future Purple Eagles. All right, now uh, this year the team brought in eight new recruits, two of which are going to redshirt. Uh, what should fans look for out of the new guys, especially players like Dan Kalenda and Hugo Turco? Well, Dan Kalenda is a big guy. He's six four, and I, I think he weighed in at two twenty. Uh, he's a big physical forward, and he's a power forward with a lot of skill too. He can really skate for a big guy. So I think I think he's going to be a fan favorite here at Niagara when when the fans get to see him play. He plays hard all the time. Hugo Turcott um, has had a great training camp for us and a really skilled, fast, dynamic player and 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 an offensive guy. So I think he's going to have a seam seamless transition into college hockey, and we're going to give him you know plenty of playing time right out of the gate. Okay. Um, and this year the Purple Eagles were picked second in the AHA preseason poll uh, behind Air Force. I know last year's playoff experience will help the team, but what does this team have to do to take that top spot? Well, I, I think first and foremost, having those experiences and now the knowledge that we gained. You know, we, we, it, playing Robert Morris here at home in a two out of three playoff form, uh, series was the first time in the history of our program that we've had that. And it, and it, was, a diff it was a different weekend. So going through that experience, winning, and then getting to Blue Cross Arena for the league final four, um, you know, we came one overtime goal away from being in the championship game. Those experiences have to help this team, and I think it's made, I think it's given us some confidence, and I, but it's also on the other side has, has made our team really hungry to get back. Okay, uh, and last question, Bowling Green coming up this Saturday. Uh, can you give us a quick scouting report, and what kind of game do you expect? Well, they're, they're a really good team out of the CCHA, which is arguably the best you know, one of the best conferences in college hockey. And just for us, we're the first game in college hockey across, across the nation here this year. So we're really excited and honored to, to start off the college hockey season. And Bowling Green has, is one of the most storied programs 
in the history of college hockey on a lot of pros, Rob Blake and George McPhee, who's now the GM of the Capitals, and the, the list goes on and on. So, um, and they had a really good end to their season as we did. They, uh, they took down Ferris State in a two out of three on the road and, uh, and ended up losing to Michigan in overtime in their league semifinals. Um, and Michigan ended up going to the Frozen Four. They got an at-large bid and went to the Frozen Four. So that shows you what a feat Bowling Green pulled off at the end of the year. So um, really fast, really big physical team, very well coached. Uh, it's going to be a huge test for us to have them here at the Dwyer Arena.